tuming him si Dr. Adikari. We could test some other family members. It's easier to find a match if we do it. Mariang umiling si Emmanuel. I'd rather spend my fortune and have that option well from my side. But maybe her mother could try to test her other family members. That's impossible, Zeki murmured. Nagkatingin na ang dalawang matanda roon. Nahanginig ang mga kamay ni Emmy nang ibaba ang hawak niyang papel. It was the test result from Zeki and Ishta's doctor informed her beforehand about the unfortunate result. The father is also not a match. We need to hurry. Your daughter might succumb at any time. Her frail body could not withstand the medications. Maraming sinabi ang doktor, pero sa kanya hindi niya yun marinig ng maayos. It was nothing but an indistinct chatter. His mind was chaotic enough that she wanted to throw a fit. Doc, how can we be sure that this result is not fake? The doctor shook his head. I have coordinated with Dr. Adhikari regarding the matter, and we have worked with the best doctors in Asia. Our professions is at stake if we faked it. Damn it! Di na pigilan ni Emmy ang ilang ulit na mapamura. Ano ngayon ang gagawin niya? Dr. Adhikari said that they will find a suitable donor. However, it will take time. Huminga na malalim ang doktora bago nagpatuloy. I won't lie, but the more we delay the operation, it will further deteriorate your daughter's condition. Maang nanapatitig si Emmy sa kausap. How long can Ishta wait? The doctor seemed hesitant to answer. Ishta has acute leukemia that could progress quickly over weeks. That's why she needed a transplant as soon as possible. Let's pray that she will get through the intense treatment while waiting for a donor. Naikuyom ni Emmy ang kamao. Isang taon lang ang pag-asa niya para mapadali ang pagpapagaling ni Ishta, si Farah. Pero paano kapag nalaman nilang totoo? Gagaling nga si Ishta pero mawawala naman to sa kanya. Dahil tiyak hindi papayag si Farah at Zeki na hindi ito mabawi. Pwes, maghihintay siyang makahanap ng donor. She believed that her daughter could wait. Ay mo bang maghanap ng donor sa ibang family member mo? Untag ng doktor. Umiling si Emmy. I don't think that's necessary. We will only waste our time. The doctor looked puzzled but he did not ask any further questions. Paulit-ulit lang nitong sinabi na kailangan nilang magmadali. Hihingin niya ba ang tulong ni Farah? No freaking way. Her mind loaded the idea. Gagaling si Ishta pero hindi sa tulong ni Farah. Nagulat nga si Farah na mapagsino ang kanyang mga bisita ng araw na yon. It was Dave and Anya. She was busy in her mini office monitoring the reports of the Zachneys and the HGC when one of their house hates come in. Mabilis siyang lumabas sa tagad sa nalubong ng yakap ang dalawa. Nagbesa sa mga ito. I'm glad you guys paid the visit. Nakangiti ang bati ni Farah sa pareha. You're looking great. Natutuwang bulalas ni Anya nang makita siya. Thanks. Come in. I'm sorry I was quite busy these days. I could not keep in touch. It's okay. We only came here to give you this. May kinuha si Dave sa bulsa na saot nitong abuhing coat at binigay sa kanya. Oh my! Congratulations! Muli ni Farah niya kapang dalawa. It was their wedding invitation. Nasa loob sila ng living room ng sandaling ng antala sa pag-uusap na biglang sumulpot ang kambal sa kinaroonan nila. Papa Dave, Auntie Anya. Halos magkasabay na wika ni Zach at Rava. Hello guys. Bati ni Dave sa kambal. Mabilis sumalik ang dalawa sa pisngi ng kanilang mga besita. Kids, go back to your room for a while. Ani Farah sa mga anak. But we want to catch up with Papa Dave. I think Papa doesn't love us anymore since he broke his promise to come home with you. Nakangusong wika ni Rava. Rava, please. We talked about it many times, right? Now go. Pagtataboy ni Farah sa mga anak. Agad namang tumalima ang dalawa kahit nagpoprotesta. We will play later. Pasigaw na wika ni Dave sa kambal na biglang nagliwanag ang mukha at kamaway bago pumasok sa loob ng kanyang study room. Magkatabing na opo si na Dave at Anya sa mahabang sofa. Sorry for the late notice. We will have an intimate celebration and we only invite a few close friends and family. Anya did not want a grand wedding. Ani Dave nabakas ang pagbamaktol sa huling sinabi. Namilog ang mata ni Anya. Wedding is just a mere celebration. I've been married once. It was grand. But look at what happened. Inakbayan ni Dave si Anya. You're right. And from now on, you're always right. He winked. Natawa si Farah habang minamasan ng dalawa. They looked so in love. 
Masaya siya para kay Dave dahil sa wakas, natagpuan na nito ang tamang babae para dito. Your wedding is in two weeks. We'll definitely attend. Siguradong saan ni Fana. I told him to wait for you, to wake up from coma before our big day. Gusto kasi namin naroon ka pati ng kambal. I mean, you are a big part of our love story. Nakangiting hayag ni Anya. Farah giggled. Yeah, I heard about it from mom. I'm honored, by the way. Best wishes. To make him si Dave. <clears throat> How Zeki? Mabilis na palis ang ngiti sa mukha ni Fada. Nagbuga siya ng hangin at marahang napailing. We are on a rough patch. I went to Nepal recently to check on him since they hide his condition from me. And he wants a divorce? Nagkatinginan si na Dave at Anya. I'm sure he did not mean it, Dave said. Tumango si Fada. I know, but he has been so indifferent. But we've been through a lot. Sigurado malalampasan din namin to. Hinawa ka ni Anya ang kamay ni Farah. Be strong. I have seen how Zeki loves you. I am sure he has his reasons. Marilinawan din naman yan eh. I hope it would be too late. Farah smiled. There is no perfect marriage, but he vowed to be together through thick and thin. Kahit sumusuko na siya, ako hindi. Dave nodded. That's the spirit. If I did not love Anya, I would still be away from Zeki. Nanlaki ang mata ni Farah. Nakaramdam ng pagkailang dahil kaharap lang nila si Anya. Pero tumawa ng malakas ang babae. Malakas ang dosage ng gayuma ko sa'yo, Dave. Sorry ka na lang. Akin ka na forever. Natawa si Dave. Walang pasabi, kinabig nito si Anya. Ninakawa ng halik sa labi. The potion will never wear off. I will forever sweep on your feet. Namilog ang mata ni Anya. I never knew you were this juicy. Tumingin to sa kanya. My apologies, Farah. I am really happy for you guys. Totoo sa loob na wika ni Farah. We're always here as one of your closest friends. Dave reassured her. Marami silang napag-usapan. Hindi rin tinago ni Farah ang tungkol sa kalagay ni Ishta. Nangako ang dalawa na tutulong kahit ramdam niyang tila di nila gusto ang bata na anak to ni Emmy. Naganap ang kasal na Dave at Anya. It was held at their private resort in the province of Camarines Sur. Yun din ang resort na minsang napuntahan nila Farah at doon nila unang nakilala si Anya. The couple chose this place since it was memorable for them. Doon daw kasi talaga nagsimula ang pag-iibaga nila. It was a sunrise beach wedding. Tila nakikisamang panahon sa pag-iisang dibdib ng dalawa. Banayad ang paghampas ng alon sa dalampasigan habang di maulap ang kalangitan. Kagaya ng kasal ni Regine, the guests were no more than 30. Anya wore a simple white off-shoulder dress para itong Diyosa sa karagatan. Samantalang si Dave nakasot ng puting three-piece suit. Bakas ang matinding saya sa mukha ng dalawa habang naglalakad patungo sa altar. Napapalibutan ng mga sunflower ang venue at si colors ang motif ng kasal. The sound of the violin reverberated along with the crashing of the waves when they started the wedding entourage. Bukod kay Farah, naran din sa na Enzo at Regine. Magkakatabi sila sa upuan kasamang anak na kambal na magsimula ng seremonya. Who would have thought they would marry his childhood friend? Fate never ceases to amaze us. Nakangiting sa mit ni Regine habang nakamasid sa kinakasal. Just like us, my love? Nalingon ni Enzo ang asawa. Di nila kasama mga anak para walang masyadong alalahanin. This is boring. Narinig nilang wika ni Zack. Nakasuot to ng moss green along Steve na match kay Rava na suot ang maxi dress sa parehong kulay. Pinanlakihan ni Farah ng mata ang anak. Manners, Zack, it's your Papa Dave's wedding. Please behave. Binilata naman ni Rava ang kapatid habang hawak ang basket na puno ng sunflower petals. Pinagpaliban muna ni Farah ang planong pagbabalik ng Nepal dahil na rin sa mahalagang okasyong ito. This past few days, there was an improvement on Zaki's behavior. Kinakausap na kasi nito ang kambal at kahit di pa rin sila nagpapansinan ang mahalaga, hindi rin ito natiis sa mga anak na matagal na nangungulila sa ama. It was a good sign after all. Nangilid ang luha sa mata ni Farah na magsimula si Dave sabihin ang wedding vows nito. She could feel his utmost sincerity the way he uttered those words. Mariing nakatitig si Dave sa mata ni Anya. We have met early in our lives, yet we chose a different path, thinking we are never meant to be more than friends. We had our own first love and heartache, and yet, 
as soon as we meet again after a decade that we've been apart, I am sure you will be my last. You will be the mother of my children and the woman with whom I will spend the rest of my life with. I promise to stay in every struggle and happiness. The guests could see the groom radiated so much love, and so was the bride. Maluhaluharin si Anya ng marinig ang mga sinabi ni Dave. She knew he was speaking from the heart, but Anya's wedding vow made Dave smile. I have been honest of giving you a strong dosage of love potion. Simula ni Anya at tagtawanan ng mga bisita. She continued, I was sure you were not my type. Maybe my perception changed when you gave me your favorite Hummer car. Muling napuno ng tawanan ng paligid. Pero nagseryoso na si Anya sa wedding vow nito. I am so lucky to have you as my husband. I never want to remarry. I was dramatized to be in a relationship again. But you are the living proof that all men are not the same. I promise to love and cherish you until death do us part. Farah could not help her lips to curve up. Ngayon alam niya kung bakit nahulog ang loob ni Dave sa babae. Anya got the sense of humor. Dave was a sucker for that. Alam na alam niya yun. Dahil matagal ding naging sila noon. Napuno ng masigabong palakpakan ng paligid nang sabihin ng marriage officiant ang pinakahihintay ng lahat. You may now kiss the bride. The newlyweds shared a powerful kiss. Everyone celebrated their marriage and they partied on the beach. Tabang tama dahil bagyang maulan na at di gaanong mainit. I should have brought the kids here. I miss them already. Anna Regine habang pinagmamastan si Nazaka Trava na balang naglalaro ng puting buhangin sa hindi kalayuan. Pero nagre-reklamo ka naman minsan dahil triple din ang kulit. Natatawang sambet ni Farah sa matalik na kaibigan. We can handle them. That's why we always need to be healthy. Ang taas pa naman ng energy ng mga bata. Napapailing na wika ni Enzo sabay lagok ng red wine. Naroon sila nakaupo sa isang papilog na mesa habang ginaganap ang resepsyon ng kasal ni Dave. The live performance of the band giving Hawaiian songs and some guests were dancing. Unti-unting sumikat ang araw pero napapalibutan ng malaking kulay puting umbrella tent ang buong reception area. Malapit yon sa malawak na sunflower garden sa bahay ni Dave. May plano pa ba kayong dagdagan ng triplets? Tanong ni Farah sa mag-asawa. Hell yes! Walang gatol na saan ni Enzo na mabilis si Nikon Regine. No way! Ang hirap mga anak! She sighed. I hope it's as pleasurable when we're making them. Farah laughed. You're crazy, Regine. Kidding aside, if we can handle more kids, it would be better to have a big family. I agree. Tinaas ni Enzo ang hawak na kubita. Regine glared at her husband. If you'll be the one to give birth, why not? Natawa si Enzo at inakbayan to. You cannot resist my charm anyway. He kissed her forehead. Nasa ganoon silang kalagayan ng lapitan sila ng bagong kasal. They congratulated them again. You look gorgeous. Farah looked at the newlyweds. Thanks, Farah. I hope Zeki could make it here. Ani Dave. Automatic kong nakakunot ang noon ni Farah. What do you mean? Tipid ng umiti ang lalaki. Never mind. Samantalang patangutango lang si Enzo sa tabi, Farah did not know that Enzo has dropped by in Nepal to see Zeki before coming back to the Philippines. Pero wala siyang planong banggitin yon sa babae. Makahulog ang nagpalita ng sulyap si na David Enzo at mabuti nilang di na nag-usisa pa si Farah. Kahit nakita nito ang lihim na pagsiko ni Anya sa tagilila ng asawa. Tuwang-tuwang lumapit si na Zach sa Atrava sa bagong kasal. You look like a fairy, Auntie Anya. I can't wait to get married too, Rava said with her dreamy eyes. Pinasel ni Anya ang maumbok nitong pisngi. Don't grow up so fast, sweetie. Your mom and dad would not like it, but I want to wear a white dress like a princess. Naglamo pa ng batang babae. Papa Dave, can we go home now? Sabat ni Zach. As usual, he looked bored. Later, Zach, don't you like the beach? Ani Dave. Umiling ang batang lalaki. If only Baba is here, he would join me in swimming. Nana did not want me to go, Zach. Saway ni Farah sa anak. Wait a little longer, sweetheart. We will be home at night. Lalo pang napanguso si Zach. Nakipagsaya si na Farah to Jean sa reception ng kasal. Pero maaga silang umuwi bandang hapon dahil panay na ang kulit ni Zach. Kilala ni Farah ang anak at ayaw niyang doon ito magtantrums. Nagpaiwan naman ang mag-asawang Regine at Enzo para sulitin ang bakasyon dahil ngayon pa lang sila nakapunta sa private resort ni Dave. 
Nagustuhan kasi ng dalawa ang lugar. Sinulit nila ang panong di kasama mga anak. It was almost dusk when they reached their house in Naga. At gay na lang pagkagulat ni Farah na makita ang liinaasang pigura na nakaupo sa living room. Baba! Magkasabay na sigaw ng kambal at patakpong lumapit sa kinaroroonan ng ama. Kinarap ni Farah ang mata. Namamalik mata ba siya? Samantala, abala naman sina Donna at Diam sa isang kirilang mall sa Milan. They were merrily strolling around the oblivious to their surroundings. There were no prying eyes there despite them being famous. Wala rin silang kasamang bodyguards na nakabuntot. Although they were watching from afar, para na rin sa kanilang seguridad. God, I miss being with you like this. Pang lalambeng ni Donna sa kasintahan. I prefer alone time though. I can still see our bodyguards from my peripheral vision. Natatawang saan ni Liam. At least we could pretend we're alone. Ngumite si Donna. Pinilit niyang huwag masyadong isipin ang sarili-sariling problema na kinakaharap, lalo pat hanggang ngayon wala pa rin pagbabago sa lagay ng kanyang kapatid. Kahit anong sikap niyang i-distract ang sarili, she could not help but worry about her brother's failing marriage. Higit niyang inaalala ang mga pamangkin. Ilang buwan na rin na hindi nakikita ang ama at wala rin siyang mukhang maihaharap kay Farah dahil kasabot niya sa pagtatago sa totoong kalagay ni Zeki. Nakahawak si Donna sa braso ni Liam habang naglilipot. She was ecstatic since her man made an effort to be with her despite his hectic schedule. May event din kasi itong dinilohan sa Italy kaya hindi nito sinayang pagkakataon na puntahan siya. I miss you so much as in so much that I could scale it to the moon and back. Biglang sambit ni Liam sabay halik sa tungki ng ilong ni Donna. We always see each other despite the distance. Donna's lips curved up. Liam heaved a sigh. I can't wait to be with you every day. I hope you accept my proposal, sweetheart. I can only be assured if you are mine, legally. Donna tiptoed to reach Liam's lips and gave him a quick peck. We shouldn't be in a hurry. Hindi tinago ni Liam ang pagkakunat ng mukha. He proposed to Donna over a week ago, but she politely declined. Sinabi nitong wag muna silang magbadali ang importante na kakaintindihan ng dalawa, kaya't walang magawa ang lalaki. Ayaw naman niyang mamilit at nauunawaan niya naman ito. They were looking into each other's eyes when someone called their names. Ma'am Donna, Sir Liam! Sabay na napalingon ang pareha sa pinanggalingan ng tinig. Tumambad sa kanilang matangkad na lalaki. Na may dalang isang buke ng pulang rosas. Rick! Donna exclaimed. Of course, she knew him. He was one of her hot brother's bodyguards, but he immediately resigned after his buddy, Leo, died in a car accident. Natutuwang lumapit sa kanilang lalaki. Sabi ko na nga ba hindi ako nagkakamali? Kamusta po? Lumingon-lingon si Rick at tila hindi na ito na malawag. Nakahinga na makita ang tagabantay ng dalawa na nasa hindi kalayuan lang nakamasin. We're good. What are you doing here? Tanong ni Donna. Dito po nagtatrabaho ang asawa ko. So, surpresahin ko sana siya ngayon. Small world talaga. Dito pa tayo sa Milan nagkita. Matagal ko na sana kayong gusto makausap. The couple could tell that Rick was kind of relieved when he saw them. Probably because they were a good employer. Sumabat si Liam. Ang mabuti pa, doon tayo sa restaurant mag-usap. Rick, aren't you in a hurry? Umiling si Rick. Hindi naman po. Mas importante po ang gusto kong sabihin sana. Nakuha ng lalaki ang atensyon ni Donna. Ah, uh, what do you want to tell me? Sandaling di ko mi boss si Rick bago ito sumagot. Tungkol po sa nangyaring aksidente kay Sir Zeki at kay Ma'am Farah. You know what? Liam is right. We should talk properly. Tinuro ni Donna ang malapit na restaurant sa kinaroroonan nila at sabay-sabay nilang tinungo iyon. Hindi mapakali si Rick habang nag-o-order ng pagkain si Liam. They waited for a while until the food were served. Tsaka nagsimulang magkwento ang lalaki. At dito na po nagtatapos ang kabanata ng ating kwento. Sana'y muli niyo po akong samahan sa mga susunod pang kabanata. Maraming salamat po. Keep safe everyone!